I mean, I've studied every bubble in history and, and in all different countries and, and, and not just stocks, but real estate and tulips. And I mean, you name it, all types of stuff. Bubbles always burst. Stock valuations are being questioned and cause this bubble to burst. So you do not. I'm telling you, you do not get hyperinflation here. You got to remember in the first place, remember what I just said, eight months in the stock top and the recession starting to build before things really got nasty. And when they did, everything went down. Banks went down, all this sort of stuff. And that's when they printed massive amounts of money. And that eventually got us out of it. What I see has happened, the key thing that happened with COVID, COVID was such a shock short term. It was a mini depression. They had to really step up. Greg, I've calculated that since the repo crisis, and that was only a small part of it, when they started to taper off and the banks got short of funds and then all of a sudden they had to borrow, you know, and then they had to start printing money rapidly again. In other words, tapering didn't work. The system still needs this crack and stimulus to keep going because it's dead underneath, you know? Well, it just, it, it just got worse. And then it finally collapsed sharply in late 2008. Most of that crash and the damage done was between June and November of 2008, just so many months. So when this thing cracks, it's going to crack hard. And, and, and what the central banks just did, including now governments, I calculated in the United States that between the monetary stimulus since the repo crisis, just a few months before COVID, and then after COVID, and now the fiscal stimulus committed on top of that with more promised every day, is up to 65% approximately of U.S. GDP. You, you can't spend 65% of your GDP to keep an economy limping along long term at one and a half, two percent Actually, the growth of U.S. GDP since the 2008 bottom in the money printing started 1.6%. So massive money printing just to grow at 1%. But when you go to 65% within 18 months, how are you going to follow that up? Are they going to do 100% next time in three months? There's a point where it's so ridiculous and so massive and the response is so it's like, oh, the economy's growing kind of fast. Not compared to 65% of stimulus. You could have just given all that money straight to consumers or sent them washing machines and cars for all that money and done way better. When it doesn't, when you get more and more and it does less and less and it is a diminishing returns thing. I've said that from the beginning. No artificial scheme can work because it's not real investment, real returns, real reinvestment at high returns again. It's just throwing artificial money in and propping up something already dead. He has diminishing returns. So there's a point where, where anybody looks and says, well, this is ridiculous. I think it just got ridiculous. U.S. 65% of GDP to fight the COVID crisis. So again, what are they going to do? Like I said, 100% next time? There's a point where people say, what? There's a point in where the smart money finally caves and says, okay, we're shorting this. When the smart money who has concentrated money, when they short the market, they don't short it. They don't go like a oh, wild well, short stock. They short 10 to 20 times leverage. They have, they, they, they hit it like a hammer. When they turn around, the Fed will not be able to compete. And that's what I'm saying. And, and again, every crash faster and deeper until it gets so fast, they can't get ahead of it. They barely caught this one and they won't catch the next one by my end. I've been saying that for, for years and years. Bubbles burst, and they burst faster than they build, and the greater the bubble, the greater the bubble. I've got these, all my books, I've got 10 principles of bubbles. I'm not gonna go all that here. Bubbles are bubbles, this is a bubble. What Jeremy is, he's a very wise man. <laughs> Unlike me, he comes out only when it is, it is this close, and you got a way higher chance of being right, and, and, and he's right about that, this has to burst. I mean, I've studied every bubble in history and, and in all different countries and, and, and not just stocks, but real estate and tulips. And I mean, you name it, all types of stuff. Bubbles always burst. They've never been a soft landing to a bubble ever in history. And people now think, yeah, this bubble won't last forever, but the government will let us down slowly. I'm telling you, they're, they're having to double down, double down, double down, double down till they get so leveraged. Like I said before, that crash will be so sharp and steep that they won't be able to pull their guns out fast enough before they get hit by the other shooter. They, they are creating the very monster that will kill them. They're saving the economy from a debt crisis 
by creating a financial asset bubble that makes at least the top 20% feel richer because it doesn't do much for the average consumer. And that bubble is going to burst faster than any debt bubble. To, for a debt bubble to burst, people have to go in chapter 11, a renegotiation, and da 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 No, financial asset bubbles just go bam, 40, 50%. How do you like that, Apple? That's what's going to happen. A debt bubble doesn't burst that fast. So this financial asset bubble has been created by the central banks and this financial asset bubble, which is what's gonna kick their sets, okay? That's what's gonna happen. They basically shoot themselves in the foot by exponentially printing more money, because like a balloon, you can blow it up, blow it, especially slowly, blow it up. Any, any balloon will pop at some stretch. When it pops, how fast does it pop, Greg? Boom, pops, boom. That's what's gonna happen to this thing at some point. And again, I think I love seeing Jeremy come in. He's a little wiser than I. He's been around longer. He is one of the granddaddies that really sees risk, understands bubbles. When he comes in and says it, you really should listen. So I love him coming in. I'm very happy to hear him chiming in. Silver goes up faster and crashes faster, but if it really becomes a monetary crisis, gold is the ultimate thing. Gold would go to levels like that only if we have a hyperinflation scenario like 1920 to 23 with the Weimar Republic. This has not been the trend so far. This does not compare to that at all. The, the, those sort of hyperinflation scenarios, Greg, happen when, when, when countries or people in countries have to borrow from foreign countries because they don't have a strong banking system. So it usually happens in third world countries or weak countries. And then when they start to default and stuff, oh, not only do the, 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 you know, the, the faults happen, and the banks, them, but but their currency falls for the country that's doing having more defaults, and it's the fall of the currency that makes the debts to the foreign borrowers go up exponentially. That's what a hyperinflation is. You don't go in this case from zero percent to one percent to two percent. Now we're at about three percent inflation. Look, you know how much money we printed already. You know, like a hundred trillion dollars and stuff. You've counted all up in the last survey, more than any time in history. And we're still sitting at two, three percent inflation in most countries. We have a, that only created that much. You don't get to hyperinflation here. We may get to five or six for this thing. Go. And even that would cause bonds to go down in value and, and cause stock valuations to be in question and cause this bubble to burst. So you do not, I'm telling you, you do not get hyperinflation here. You do not get gold at five to 10,000 in any scenario I see except for Weimar Republic. And that is not what's happening here. The U.S. does not borrow foreign like other smaller countries and some countries do. And we couldn't create hyperinflation if we tried. And I've been saying that for years and it's still even with this 65% of GDP, we just gone from 2% to three or four. Come on, that's not hyperinflation. And it would take hyperinflation to have gold go to those prices. And gold has gone down even recently with this surge in, in money printing. It's gone down again. It was in 1900 and something, and then it's down, no, 2089. Now it's back down in 1800, 1760. It's gold is an inflation hedge not a deflation hedge. And the next step in this process, without question, if you look at history and the progress from spring to summer to fall to winter and bubbles to burst, bubbles always create deflation because financial assets and money collapse and there's less money chasing the same goods. Deflation, gold does not go up to $5,000 in deflation. Treasury bonds go up. That's what goes up. Look at history. Un no question about it. And almost nothing else done does. Deflation kills all financial assets except the safest bonds, period. Gold will do very well in the next global boom because the leading countries are going to be China to a lesser degree and now Southeast Asia and India. And those are the countries that love gold the most for normal reasons, to wear it on your body and show off your damn wealth, okay? Gold will do well for fundamental reasons rather than inflation and monetary and all this sort of stuff. Gold is losing its monetary value. And that, again, blockchain and Bitcoin is here to replace gold in a digital world. Gold does not have, not going to have that role. I, I couldn't, I love Jim and all these people because they realize you don't get something for nothing. Money printing doesn't work. It always collapses. I don't see gold as a safe haven. It was a safe haven in the 70s, not in the 30s, and not now. Especially not with the digital threat on top of everything else. It's not about irresponsible government spending and stimulus. 
It's about whether this ends up in inflation or deflation. I'm the deflation camp, like 1930s and even 2008 and 9 brushed with deflation. We didn't see hyperinflation come out of that, not even in the in the recovery. We only seen a little bit now. So that's the difference. Deflationary outcome or inflationary, most bubble bursts in history, almost all of them end in deflation because money and money in terms of financial assets and money disappears. Less money chasing goods only leads to deflation in prices, which is good long term. Things cost. What's wrong with things? Go, do you cry when something goes on sale 50 percent? That's deflation. I just bought headphones 50 percent off. That's deflation. I'm happy. Cost less. It hurts people who are holding assets that deflate. That's included. So I'm telling people get out of financial assets, get into solid bonds and cash like investments, and then rebuy financial assets when they're on their bottom just a few years from now, like Joseph Kennedy did. He didn't have a Harvard MBA to do that. He just common sense and hit the ball out of the park. Sold when the shoe shine boys were buying and thought nobody thought you could lose money on stocks, they'd never go down again, like now and bought when they crashed bubble burst down 89. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. What to do in such a situation? Inform yourself and keep your financial education strong. We from the Compact Group offer our loyal subscribers a free educational portal with first-hand monetary, financial, and economic knowledge. Enter our invite-only Insider Club by clicking the link below. You will get access to first-class information far earlier than the rest. We have prepared a special deal for all our members where you can access a giant pool of Robert Kiyosaki's financial wisdom for just $1. To find out more, simply click the link below and join our Insider Club absolutely free. But there is more you can and should do. Build up several streams of income. More and more people realize that they have to take their future in their own hands, but they don't know how and where to start. We from Compact offer our Insider Club members unique opportunities. Strengthen your financial muscle and get the edge. Click the link below. Become part of our free insider club. No financial obligations. But there's one important thing you have to know. You have to become active. So do it now. Become active and see you on the other side.